This is Jason McIntosh with Macintosh Applied Engineering. I want to show you how to build a simple speaker model using the Ares Acoustic Modeler. We're going to start out with uh, Ares running. Go to the new module menu, select Modeler. Here we're going to go to the Acoustical menu and select Speaker. Now we're going to create a volume element to put behind the speaker and we're going to have a radiation element to allow the front of the speaker to radiate into space. Now we need to excite the speaker somehow, so we're going to go to the electrical menu, select a voltage source, and finally a ground to act as the ground reference for our voltage source. Now I want to go ahead and connect everything up. Just click on the red connectors. They turn yellow as you mouse over them. I'm going to connect the volume to the rear of the speaker, connect the front of the speaker to the radiation element. And now I need to create a graph element so we'll be able to see the results from the model. And I'm going to connect the graph element up to the radiation point. That, this represents a point approximately one foot from the speaker that could be set here with our distance. If I change this to units of feet, the default value is one foot. So I'm going to hit Calculate. That solves for the model. And I'm going to bring the graph element over for us to take a look at it. I want to make two changes right away. One, I want to run the model down to 20 hertz instead of starting at 100. And I want this line to be thicker. So I'm going to go back to Aries, go to Global Parameters, and I want to change the minimum frequency to 20 from 100 to 20, and I'm going to go to the graph element. I'm going to select the element parameters tab, go to set buffer line, and I'm going to change the weight to 3. And I'll go ahead and hit set all in case we use some other buffers. Hit calculate to, to calculate from 20 hertz and bring the graph up again. So here we have what I'd call a fairly common looking speaker response. It's got two poles at low frequencies. This is going up as a mega squared. It's flat at the high frequencies and we have a little resonance boost here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why this is the case. So here's a classic speaker response that I drew. What's going on is at low frequencies we have two poles here. This is going up as omega squared. One of, one of those factors of, of omega is due to the cone stiffness. The other factor of omega is due to the efficiency, the radiation efficiency. So together we have an omega squared slope. At high frequencies, the radiation efficiency is still continuing as omega, but the cone mass, the mass reactance of the cone, is dropping the response down as one over omega Together, these roughly cancel, and we get a flat response at high frequencies. Then in between, we have the resonant frequency F0. From a real speaker, we end up with higher order cone modes, or the, or the cone will have breakup modes. That'll usually add a lot more details to the higher frequencies at roughly two or three times F0, these frequencies will occur. With simple teal small parameters, you won't predict these higher order mode effects. You'll need a more advanced set of parameters, such as aeroelastic parameters from May, or a complex radiating surface area model from Klippel. But uh, we'll, we'll stick with classic teal small parameters for now. So going back to Aries, we see we have a classic response out of the default parameters that just came up with putting these elements together. But I'd like to show you how you can build a model more appropriate for a speaker that you might use in your application. So I went off to the internet and found this speaker on the Parts Express website. It's for a three inch full range driver. We'll scroll down and we'll see that they list the teal small parameters for this speaker. They've got over a dozen parameters listed, but there's really only seven unique values or teal small parameters, uh, so we're not going to use all of these. Let's pull this over, go back to the model, select the speaker element, 
and we'll start entering its values in off based off the website. So the DC resistance is 6.5 ohms, so we'll enter 6.5. Inductance, they have 0.66 millihenries. Our units are microhenries right now, so let's go ahead and change that to millihenries, 0.66. For BL, they're listing it as 3.6 tesla meters, 0.6. For the diameter, they're not giving a diameter, they're giving a radiating surface area. So let's copy that value. And in Aries, you can type equations in for the parameters. So I'm going to type square root of the surface area divided by pi. That will give us the, the diameter, or the radius. We need to multiply that by 2 to give us the diameter. We've got this in millimeters, though, so we, let's convert this to centimeters. Paste that back in. So there's our expression for the diameter in centimeters. Now, for we either need mass compliance damping or we can enter resonant frequency QVAS. If you look at these parameters, there isn't a mechanical resistance entered in any of these parameters. So we're going to have to use F0, Q, and VAS. So just select Teal Small Parameters 2. These become the primary parameters and Mass compliance damping become the dependent parameters. We see that the resonant frequency is 122. Q, now we want the Q of the mechanical system, QMS, which is 2.36. And then VAS, they list as uh, 0.03 cubic feet. So let's start change our units here to cubic feet. And we'll enter... 0 0.03 cubic feet. We want to change the parameters for the rear volume as well. Let's change these to inches. That's a little easier to think in. I'll set the diameter of the rear volume to be 3. That's the diameter of the speaker. Now I want to enter the volume directly. So I'm going to select compute height from the diameter and the volume. So height becomes a dependent parameter now. I'm going to enter this in cubic feet. And for the value, I'm going to enter the same value as VAS, 0 0.03 cubic feet. For the front radiation element, we want its diameter to be the same diameter as the speaker. So we know it's going to be in centimeters. So let's go back to the speaker. We'll just copy this expression out and paste it in for the diameter or the radiation element. Now, before we hit calculate, I want to save the current graph response to buffer A. I'll call this default parameters. Press A to copy it into buffer A. And I'll select this to have it plotted. And I'll hit calculate. And let's bring up the graph. So we've got the original curve and the new curve that we just have plotted here. So our curve has the omega squared slope at low frequencies. We're seeing a slight rise here, probably due to the resonance, but our high frequencies are rolling off. It's not really plateauing flat like we'd expect. So let's try to figure out what's going on here. To do that, I'm going to look at the electrical impedance into the speaker. I'm going to create a new graph element, connect that up to the speaker, and uh, I need to change the quantity from voltage to impedance. I'm going to go to advanced options and I'm going to tell it I want it in linear units, not dB. Otherwise, we'd have dB ohms. So I'm going to grab that graph, pull it in here. And let me change the line weight again to 3 for this graph. And here's the impedance in ohms. We're seeing a nice peak in the impedance due to the resonance. But at high frequencies, instead of this remaining small, the impedance is taking off to higher and higher values. This is going to limit the amount of current delivered to the voice coil, which is going to limit how much force is delivered to the cone and how much uh, pressure the speaker is generating. So our, our high frequency roll off is being caused by this impedance increase here. What's causing this? is the inductance. 
to verify that the inductance is causing this, I'm going to go back to the model. I'm going to select the speaker icon, and I'm going to decrease the inductance of the voice coil. 0.66 millihenry is pretty high. Instead of changing the numeric value, I'm going to enter in a mathematical expression. I'm just going to divide that inductance by 10. This way, if I come back and I want to restore the inductance to its previous value, all I have to do is edit out the divide by 10. It's easier to do that than to try to remember what the parameter was in the first place. And before I hit calculate, I want to copy the current model into this other buffer B. I'm going to call this original speaker parameters. Check, check B. Copy it in there. Now I'll hit calculate. And let's bring our pressure graph up. So now what we had before was the red curve where we we're losing the output at high frequencies. The new curve in blue has our plateau here. It's it's pretty flat at the high frequencies, which is what we'd expect. So we're losing our output at high frequencies due to that large inductance on the voice coil. I would like to see what happens if we uh, lower the Q of our speaker. Our Q right now is a little over 2, which is which is a respectable value. It, it, uh, sometimes you can get a little higher than that, but not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and lower the Q and see if we can get more of a peak out of this uh, if, out of this response. So I'm going to go back to the speaker. Here's the Q. I'm going to multiply that by 10. Hit calculate. So let's go back to our graph, see what happened. So increasing the Q did increase the resonance here a little bit, but not by much. So that's how you build a simple speaker model in ARIES. Uh, this is just one very simple topology. You can add a lot more detail if you'd like. You can add a base reflex port. You can add interior waveguides. You can add leaks to front to back. Uh, really, the sky's the limit with regard to your uh, uh, creative imagination and what you can physically build with the acoustics. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at support at maellc.com.